Do you know how big an adult great white shark is? Bigger than this guy, that's for sure. Do you know how big a giant Pacific manta ray is? Sometimes upwards of 15 feet across. How do we get that entire huge animal in one image? How do we take a picture of a shipwreck and capture the whole thing in one image? What we need is a wide angle setup for photography. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Welcome to Everything Scuba. Last time in our underwater photography series, we started to discuss the anatomy of how we put together a nice camera system and all the components that would go with it. We are talking about the Olympus EPL-10 mirrorless camera, but this could pertain to a lot of different camera systems. We talked about the fact that this camera comes with a 14 to 42 millimeter lens, which is going to allow me to take pictures of things down to as small as a small crab, all the way up to maybe the size of a large puffer fish. But if I want to fit something like a big old toothy shark in my picture, or a giant manta ray, or an entire shipwreck scene, I'm going to be limited by that lens. So, we are going to today talk about a wide angle system and how that works. But before we do, I am Lyle and welcome to Everything Scuba. If you're a first time viewer to our channel, we want to welcome you. We are here talking about, well, everything related to the sport that we love. And if you love it too, which we hope you do, if you love to scuba dive, dive into Everything Scuba. So, moving on. We are going to review this wide angle lens and how it works with this system. Let's do it. Attached to the system now is the AOI UWL09 Pro wide angle lens. That's a mouthful. This is a wet lens, meaning um, we're going to be able to attach and detach that underwater. Uh, it's a pretty heavy thing. The one thing that we're gonna learn is uh, wet lenses compared to a normal dry lens mount uh, is going to be much more negatively buoyant in the water. And as such, that's going to have a detrimental effect on the trim of our system, meaning this is going to want to pull my camera forward and downward, so I'm going to have to constantly fight to try and keep that lens in an upright position. And so uh, when you purchase that, you may then purchase a uh, underwater uh, float system that goes around the neck of the lens and allows the camera to stay nice and level and trim. Again, this is made by AOI, uh, has a little Velcro system that holds that in place. Uh, gives the system an overall bulkier look, but it makes a huge difference underwater. Uh, this lens gives me about a 130 degree view. So not a true fisheye, which would be 180, uh, but you can capture, you know, big old animals like uh, sharks, manta ray, uh, or if you wanna get really up close to something and get a much wider angle, different perspective. I've got a photograph of an octopus right here. Um, that does an amazing job too, where it really lets you get up close and capture all of that, uh, that image. And so this is kind of the basic setup that I would go out with if I was trying to do some wide angle photography. Uh, again, further distance away, smaller flashes, maybe that's not gonna carry the light. I have to get a little bit more creative with my lighting, um, but overall this works well for wide angle. Another item that I mentioned there with the housing is initially it came with a flat port on the front uh, and it had some threads in it and the, uh, the wide angle wet lens would screw into that and it took a long time to actually install that. And if you're underwater, uh, things are kind of slippery, particularly if you have gloves on. Last thing I wanna do is drop my lens, which should be tethered to the system and we'll talk about tethers as well. Uh, I've learned the hard way that uh, a tether will save some expensive equipment. But right here is the quick disconnect system or quick connect system uh, made by AOI. On the underside, uh, hard to see, there is a little push button. And what that allows me to do, if I can do this without blocking your view completely, is if I push on that button, I can simply do a quarter turn rotation. And now the lens is separate from the system. 
And so uh, the, it has a little latch system in here, so when you screw that lens in, it'll click in place. It's not gonna come loose until you push that button again and allow it to release. And so I found that to be very helpful. Uh, had to be installed by yourself. Uh, and again, we'll, we'll do a quick little, maybe quick tip video on just how to install that quick connect and disconnect system. And then to put it back on, it's as simple as finding the slot and rotating it in. And hey presto, your wide angle lens is back in place. So, so some of you might say, well, if that's the case, I'm just gonna put the lens on, on the boat and not have to worry about it. But the issue with a wet lens is you need to clear out the air that is trapped between the housing and the lens uh, itself. And so that means you have to burp your lens underwater, uh, kind of a rude term, but it essentially means that you're gonna to have to detach the lens from the front of the housing, clear off any bubbles, any air, and then reattach it. So now you have water in between the lens and the housing. And so, uh, having a quick connect and disconnect system makes that so much easier. Another option here is to add another camera to your camera. This is a way that I will be able to add an additional camera either as a backup or if I don't have my wide angle lens on, um, this camera is the DJI Osmo Action, which has a 140 degree uh, field of view and uh, allows me to capture some wide angle images from maybe a different perspective. And so uh, not unusual that I will mount this on top. And so uh, the different components we have here, so there's a cold shoe that sits on top of the housing. There's a cold shoe adapter with a ball attachment made by Nauticam. Uh, we've got a larger uh, double clamp here. And at the top, we've got a small ball uh, with the housing uh, attachment that allows me to screw in the housing and secure it there. And then this is the underwater housing that the uh, DJI Osmo sits inside of. We uh, talked about that previously, the DJI Osmo Action, uh, waterproof down to 30 feet. Uh, but again, I'm going to keep it inside of housing for safety purposes. And also, this just gives me nice flexibility. If I want to, uh, if I'm taking some macro photography, I can actually uh, loosen this up. It allows me to get different perspectives so I can actually get uh, a little bit of a wide angle view on the uh, critter that I'm taking macro photographs of. So uh, I found that you know, it gives me that option. Also if I'm shooting video on this and still photographs on my uh, camera system, I'm always going to have a video file that I can utilize as well. So this gives me a lot of flexibility when I add this small part to, to the system. Now we're gonna go to the other extreme. We've figured out how to take pictures of sharks and giant manta rays with our wide angle system. And we even figured out how to add another camera to our camera, which was pretty cool. But what if we wanna go to the other end of the extreme? We wanna take pictures of the tiniest, teensiest little animals in the sea. How do we achieve that with this system? Well, we might actually want to move to a macro lens or a diopter system. And that's what we're going to talk about next. Click the link up above.